All right, everybody, we are back for another uh, circle time lesson. We've got our friends still with us here. Uh, Mrs. White and I are in the park. We're going to be here all week doing these lessons. So um, we're going to get into our lesson really quick today, and we're just glad you all are joining us. So everybody, why don't you stand up? And we are going to pretend to be bouncing a ball. Now, Gabriel, you don't need to go get a ball. We're just going to pretend. All right. So now you can let's start out with a really, really big ball. Let's pretend we are bouncing a big, big ball, but we need a funny sound. A funny sound to make while we're bouncing our ball. Hmm. Oh, bowling ball said he wants to say oink. So we're gonna say oink as we bounce our ball. So we got our big ball. Are you guys ready? Let's bounce it five times. Here we go. Oink, 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 oink. Good job, all right. Now let's get a smaller ball. We're gonna get a smaller one. All right. Oh, all right, Eeyore wants to stick with farm animals. He wants to say moo this time when we bounce the ball. So let's bounce it five times and say moo. And this is a smaller ball. Moo, 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 moo. Catch it. All right. Oh, don't drop it. Don't drop it. All right. Good job. Let's get a teeny tiny small ball, an itty bitty ball. All right. And we're just going to bounce this with one finger, with one finger. And, all right. Somebody said bah. So we're going to say bah as we bounce the teeny tiny ball five times. Bah. Bah, 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 bah. Oh, good job. All right, now, let's try to use both hands and bounce the ball back and forth. And let's just say boing now. I think that's a great sound. So here we go. So let's get our ball and just start bouncing. Boing, 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 boing. See if you can go around your back. Boing, 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 boing. Oh, I wonder if you could bounce the ball with your head. Boing. Boing, boing, boing. Maybe our elbow. Boing, 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 boing. Other elbow. Boing, boing, boing. Can you bounce a ball with your foot? Boing, boing, boing. Other foot. Boing, 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 boing. <sighs> All right. <sighs> Good job. That was great ball bouncing, boys and girls. All right, let's get ready for our Hegarty lesson. So we're going to go ahead and sit on down now. All right, we are back, and it is time for our purple binder. And why do we do our purple binder every day? Oh, I hope you know this by now. That's right, we do our purple binder every day so we can learn how to read. That's right, if we have some new friends joining us for the first time, we do these phon phonemic awareness lessons every day. And this really helps us get to be good readers. So there's gonna be a lot of repeating after me and uh, really uh, breaking words apart and making sounds. So this is a really important part of the lesson to pay attention. So we're gonna start with some letters. We're gonna say the letter is and the sound is. And listen to how I say the sound. The letter is T, the sound is T. The letter is I, the sound is I. The letter is L, the sound is L. The letter is R, the sound is R. The letter is Z, the sound is Z. The letter is B, the sound is B. Nice job, and our friends Bowling Ball and Raccoon and Llama, I heard everybody making, a re making really good letter sounds. All right, now it is time for our rhyming words, and I'm gonna say them first. You're gonna say them. Give me a thumbs up if the words rhyme and a thumbs down if they don't rhyme. All right, I'm gonna go first. Pick, lick. Those rhyme, good job. Wash, wet. No, they tried to trick us because they start with the same sound but they don't end with the same sound. Boot, root. Nice job, those words rhyme. Told, gold. Good, another set of rhyming words. And reach, beach. 
Good, those words rhymed. All right, now we're gonna do our beginning sounds and we're gonna punch out our sounds. I'll go first and then you repeat after me. W -w water. Fell. D -d down. Y -y yes. K -k Crown. Hmm, I think I might have heard some words that are in our nursery rhyme this week. All right, now we are going to say a word slow and blend the sounds together. We can wave to the plane that's flying overhead, but I don't think it's going to be too loud for us. So we'll say the word slow, put it together. I'll go first, then it's your turn. Z, ooh, zoo. W, a, way. E, fee. D, a, day. Ooh, you. Nice job blending those sounds together. All right, now it's the fun time we get to punch out our last sound. I will go first, and then it's your turn, and watch your elbow. We don't want to bump our brother or sister or our dog or cat or anything. So my turn, then yours. And d came mm. Got t crown mm. miss s. nice job on those ending sounds. Now let's say the word fast and then we're gonna break it down into parts. So I'll go first and then it's your turn. C s e. I, I, knee, n, e, low, l, o, say, s, a. Nice job segmenting those words, taking the words and breaking them up into parts, into sounds. Now we're going to add a sound to the beginning to make a word. So everybody say E. If we add M to the beginning, we have me. Everybody say O. If we add G to the beginning, we have go. Everybody say A. If we add to the beginning we have pay everybody say e if we add to the beginning we have he and everybody say o if we add s to the beginning we have so great job we are through two pages already we're on our last page of our purple binder now we're going to take that first sound away so everybody say B. If we take away the B, we're left with E. Everybody say lay. If we take away the L, we're left with A. Everybody say moo. If we take away the M, we're left with oo. Everybody say toe. If we take away the t, we're left with o. And everybody say shy. If we take away the sh, we're left with i. Nice job. Now here's our real tricky part where we are going to substitute the sounds. Everybody say my. If we change the m, to a b, we have by. Everybody say by. If we change the b to a l, we have lie. 
everybody say lie. If we change the l to a t, we have tie. Everybody say tie. If we change the t to a s, we have sigh. And everybody say sigh. If we change the s to a m, we're back to my. And since we changed the beginning sound and the end sound stayed the same through each word, those all rhyme. So by, lie, tie, sigh, and my are all rhyming words. All right, now, speaking of rhyming words, we have some rhyming words in our nursery rhyme. Huh, nursery rhyme, and they have rhyming words. Interesting, I'd never thought of that before. Our nursery rhyme this week is Jack and Jill. So let's try to do it together slowly, and then we'll speed it up a little bit. So we'll go real slow together. Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. Jack fell down and broke his crown, and Jill came tumbling after. Oh, and look, when Mrs. White wrote this out, she put these two words red, Jill and Hill. I wonder why those words are the same color. Anybody have any ideas? Yeah, because they're rhyming words. Jill and Hill rhyme. They end in the same sound. Look at these two green words. Down, crown. Down, crown. Those end in the same sound too. So Mrs. White saw that Jill and Hill were rhyming words and she made those red and down and crown were rhyming words and she made those green. All right, let's do this one more time just at our regular speed and then we will be ready to move on in just a minute. Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. Jack fell down and broke his crown, and Jill came tumbling after. Nice job. Now in just a minute, uh, Mrs. White is going to do our question of the day because she is a renowned tree expert. So she is going to lead our question of, of the day talking about trees. So we'll be back in just a second here. Good morning, guys. I'm here today with our question of the day. Our question of the day is, have you ever seen a tree like this? Hmm. If you've been in my class at the beginning of the year, we talked about a tree like this. This kind of tree stays green all year long. Can anybody remember what kind of tree stays green all year long? That's right, an evergreen. And an evergreen, I picked up one of these sticks off the ground. I did not pull this off the tree. I found it on the ground. And an evergreen tree has these little pine needles on the ends. And the little needles stay green all year long. This kind of tree is called an evergreen. It's also the same kind of tree if you celebrate Christmas that we use for Christmas trees. A lot of people like to decorate them. If some of you may have them in your front yard, some of you may see them when you drive by. So we're gonna keep an eye out for some evergreen trees today. All right, our song for today is one that my kids in my class and the kids in Miss White's class learned for the last couple years. And it's an old spiritual, and then it was part of the civil rights movement. And people have been singing this for a long, long time, and it goes like this. And with this, and I'm gonna finger pick, I'm gonna use my fingers, not, a, not my pick, so I'll play it a little bit differently. Paul and Silas were bound in jail They had no money to pay their bail Keep your eyes on the prize Hold on Paul and Silas thought they were lost The dungeon shook and the chains 
song that song's been important to a lot a lot a lot of people over the years all right and our story today oh my goodness oh my goodness I hope you were here for uh, our first reading of a tree named Steve and this is just a great story written by Alan Zwiebel illustrated by David Catro and this is about a tree that's really part of the family's life. So what I would like to think about as we're reading this story, if a tree had feelings, how do you think the tree would feel during different parts of this story? And one thing that is really neat about this story, I'm just gonna do a little picture walk here because you don't really notice it right away, but almost every page has the same picture. There's Steve. So all through the book, you keep turning pages and it's the same picture, just different. They put the people in different places and the kids and the dog, but I think they're trying to show us that Steve was always a very important part of their lives. So our tree named Steve, written by Alan Zwiebel, illustrated by David Catro, a puffin penguin book. Dear kids, a long time ago when you were little, Mom and I took you to where we wanted to build a house for us to live in. But in order to build there, men had to come and clear the land. That means they had to chop down the trees. I remember there was one tree, however, that the three of you couldn't stop staring at. Adam thought it was crying. Lindsay said it looked nervous. And Sari, who was only two years old, couldn't pronounce the word tree and called it Steve. I love you, Steve, he, she kept saying. And then Adam and Lindsay started saying it. And before too long, Mom and I got the hint and asked the builder to please leave Steve. The day we moved in, Steve was there to greet us. how excited they are and I bet I bet if the tree were feeling something the tree would be really excited to have all the new people around he quickly worked his way into your lives as a swing holder a target third base hiding place and jump rope turner and whenever the dryer broke down he held our underwear with pride Yes, right there in the center of our yard, this weird looking tree grew to become the center of our outdoor life. Through all of our barbecues and campouts and dance parties, or when Adam and Lindsay started getting crushes on the Simon kids next door, Steve adjusted to our every need. Oh, look at that, I like the swing. 
wing on the branch. When I bet this is in the fall, you can see the leaves on the ground. So this would not be an evergreen tree because the leaves are falling on the ground. And it wasn't always easy. Standing tall through snowstorms in the winter, or when Uncle Chester napped in the hammock and couldn't, that couldn't have possibly been fun. Not to mention the time that the sewer overflowed and Steve sucked up all the smelly water before it drowned Kirby. But that's Kirby the dog. Then got so sick himself that the tree doctor had to give Steve a haircut. Made him look like a big thumb. So cut most of his branches off. Through the years, Mom and I have tried to show you, in a world filled with strangers, the peace that comes with having things you can count on and a safe place to return to after a hard day or a long trip. Which brings me to the point of this letter. Last week, a storm hit our area. And though we spared Steve's life a long time ago, this time we couldn't save him. Are we sad? Sure we are. But even in his final moments when he could have fallen on our house, sorry swings, Kirby's house, or mom's garden, Steve performed his last trick and protected all of us to the very end. And friends like this are hard to find. So when you come home from grandma's next week, Steve will not be able to greet you as he's done in the past. I'm sorry. But please know that Steve will always be with us in our hearts and in our thoughts. And in the different, and in a different tree at the other end of the yard. See you next week. Love, Dad. What I think is interesting in these last couple of pages is look how sad the dog is in this picture. He looks Oh, absolutely depressed or despondent or he's sad because I think the dog liked Steve too but look in the next picture how happy the dog is standing on Steve's stump it looks like the dog knows that the wood for that tree house was used to, uh, used to be Steve so I think that makes the dog happy um, yeah what a great story it's tough sometimes when we miss someone or we're feeling lonely but um you know we always have people around us to help us out our our parents and our friends and grandparents and aunts and uncles so um you know when we're lonely when we're feeling a little bit sad it's nice to go talk to somebody and that can make us feel better um our last little thing today is since yesterday we had our scuba fins which I accidentally brought I brought a couple different types of boots today oh I'm so sorry bowling ball I knocked your hat off interesting so we've got a couple different types of boots can anybody guess what this boot would best be used for? It's kind of heavy. It's got a rubber sole. And it tightens up here at the top. And it's got a really thick, warm liner. Jabriel, I think you are right. These are snow boots. So I use these when I have to shovel the yard. Um, when it snows outside or if I've got to walk. A little ways in the snow I'll put on my snow boots hmm. how about these how about these Navier do you have any idea what these boots would be for these boots are dirty and there's tar all over them and they're icky and they're cracking yeah these are my work boots so when I I was out putting some new asphalt out or some blacktop out yesterday. I use these work boots because I, I don't get upset if they get dirty because they're made to be outside and 
shoveling things and working in the yard. So yeah, these are my work boots. Hmm. It's a different type of boot. This is a hiking boot. So if I'm going to go out on a trail for a few hours, especially if I'm out visiting my friend in Colorado where there's mountains, I'll put on these hiking boots because they've got a really good uh, pattern on the bottom which keeps you from sliding and slipping on the rough trails. And they also have a good ankle support. They get really tight up around your ankle so you don't twist your ankle if you step on a rock wrong. So these are hiking boots. Hmm. What do you think these this is a boot up here, but it has wheels on it. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, this is a roller blade. So what you would put these on, and with your helmet and your elbow pads and your knee guards, of course, and you can roll down the sidewalk on these. Now, Mr. Calhoun was smart, and he only brought one of these today because if he had brought two of them, some people wanted, might have wanted to see how Mr. Calhoun does on the rollerblades, which we would not want to see. So unfortunately, I only brought one rollerblade, so I can't show you my superb rollerblading talent. Um, yeah, so these are all different kinds of boots that have different purposes. Um, we've had a great day here. We hope to see you all real soon. Take care of each other, be nice to each other. And uh, have a great rest of your day, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.